So you signed with the Raiders on November 9th. Mm -hmm. Eight days later, you lead the team in tackles. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you talked about being familiar with the scheme and some of its terminology, but that's still pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Take me through getting all the way to that point where you're able to be a team leader eight days after you signed with a club. Must have been pretty intense. Yeah, man, it was just preparation, man. Just uh, taking my God, giving the ability, man. All, all glory be to God just for allowing me to be able to do uh, such a great thing, um, helping me get prepared. Coach, Coach um, Jim O'Neill did a great job. Um, the guys, Eric E. Harris, did a great job of helping. Um, a lot of the guys played a part in it. Um, I can't take all the credit, at, um, but um, but um, it was it was a special special outing for me. It definitely felt good getting those um, leading the team in tackles and um, getting my feet wet. You know, the first game and getting a W. Um, most most and foremost, um, um, getting the win was was my biggest concern. And um, but I happened to lead the team, so it was a great great outing for me. You know, so now that you've gone through the first game, does the intensity decrease a bit, or are you able to breathe? Or, or is it still going to be high as you try to get further into this scheme and maybe expand your role even more than you already have it? Yeah, it's de it definitely has to intensify. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely has. Each each week we have to get better as a team, um, not only just myself, but uh, as a group, as a full group, offense, defense, and special teams. we got to up our level of focus, up our level of play, because each game gets harder. Um, when you when you trying to make this playoff run, man, it'll definitely get harder. So our preparation has to be pinpoint. As you're sitting there and you're trying to decide your next um, career move, mm -hmm. right? And trying to evaluate what's the best fit. Obviously, it's very clear from one game mm -hmm. that this is a good fit for you. Right. Uh, why do you think that is? Why was this your choice for to uh, continue your uh, football playing career? Um, well, well, Raiders is a great organization. I always. Um, look, looked up to guys in the Raiders organization, whether you go back to, um, you hear the, the names, Jack Tatum, you know, they, the old heads always told me to check him out. Um, Rod Woodson, Charles Woodson, one of my favorite guys as well. So um, the, the DBs from Oakland, um, you always hear about making, making a lot of great plays and um, the hard nose. Um, attitude that the Raiders have, the underdog attitude that they have, it just fit my personality and fit the style of play that I play in. And um, it was, you know, um, Coach Gruden, when I got the call, it was like, oh man, Coach Gruden's over there. I always liked Coach Gruden from way back in college with him on Monday night games when he, you know, he, you know, he, you can tell he loves the game. And, um, you know, I always wanted to play with a coach that loves the game, that, that has high energy because I'm the same way. So um, it was just a perfect fit for me. And people who are, have seen you play, even way back in college, have seen 36 right. across your chest for right. a long time. Now, <laughs> Sunday, they saw 21. Right. Uh, why the uh, number switch? Um, the number switch, man. Actually, man, my, my, my grandmother was the first. She was like, you, you, re you reinvent yourself for the last month since I've been off. Mm -hmm. You might want to switch your number. Um, she told me. A couple of my homeboys told me the same thing, and then after that, I, I shared it with my parents, and they was thinking the same thing. So um, it was only right. Um, the only number that I felt like I would get into would be 21, mm -hmm. um, because of Sean Taylor. You know, I grew up watching Sean Taylor a lot, and Deion Sanders as well. So um, those the two, those the two guys that definitely inspired me to get that number, and it was available. I was shocked that it was available. Man, <laughs> yeah. having 21 as a DP, you like. Why they don't have that? <laughs> but um, it, it was, you know, it was, it was just right for me. It was destined for me, and um, I felt good in the 21. Uh, you mentioned a couple times in in past interviews about Sean Taylor. Right. Was it? What is it about his game that, that kind of speaks to you that you've always identified with? He just was a dominant force. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the safety position, um, back in the days, you know. Um, when guys run the ball across the middle, um, the wide receivers tend to, you know, they, they tend to get the alligator arms and, um, you know, they fear him in the middle. And um, as a safety, you want, you want the guys to fear you when you when you come across the middle, whether it's a big hit or whether it's an interception. And he did both exceptionally well, um, running sideline to sideline, um, um, making the interceptions, turning them to the touchdown. Um, coming down, hitting the, the big tight ends and running backs, you know, he was a force in everything that he did. And, um, you know, I just wanted to model my game at an early age um, after Sean Taylor. And, um, and uh, what better way to do it than to do it in his numbers? And uh, you 
you mentioned the word um, reinvent. It's probably the, uh, during the downtime between when you were with Arizona and your time here. Right. Kind of uh, expand on that, I guess. Right. Why did you want to reinvent yourself? And like, what was that period like? You've been yeah. playing football since as long as you can right, re right. like remember. Mm -hmm. In the fall, having that time period must have been different. Yeah, it was definitely different, but it was very helpful, man. Okay. It was extremely helpful. Um, I got to look at life um, at it from a different perspective. perspective. Um, I got to get my mind, body, and spirit right. You know, I spent a lot of time with my family, my kids. Um, spent a lot of time reading. Um, that's something I haven't done in the, in the past that I wanted to do. So um, I, I picked up on a couple books. Um, it helped me, and um, I did also did some um, mental counseling as well, man. Just to, you know, being away from the game, you know, trying to figure it out. And, um, help, and it helped the man, not only the football player, but helped the man, and it bettered me a lot. And um, I look at things from a different perspective now, and um, I, I think it'll only help me um, in my future. It, when people always want to know how, how you can get ready to play so fast, right? But they mm -hmm. forget about the human element of picking up and flying on a plane and going to a city that you've never lived in and your family right. is, you know, uh, across the country. I right. assume you're living out of a hotel, right? right? Uh, like right. that aspect of it, is it a real shock to the system or are you just kind of so excited and so immersed that, you know, it, it's all football? I, I think it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime you get to be on a, be on a team, a great organization around, around great guys, it's a blessing no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what you got to do as far as your family. Um, at the end of the day, you provide for your family, and that's the blessing in it. And um, that's, that's, the, that's how I look at it, man. You know, um, yeah, it was, you know, kind of an uh, awkward moment for me and my family, of course, but at the end of the day, um, we blessed. We all blessed. We living an extra day, and uh, we doing. I'm still doing something that I love to do. So um, it's at the end of the day, it's a blessing. At, at every single one of your stops, even going back to college, you've always been known as an incredibly hard worker. I think mm -hmm. even in college, you would take, you know, the the old the, the old two per day session to right. not just mean practice. Right, to right. you, that that meant workouts. Yeah. Where does that come from? Where does um, that, the, the hard work, like where was that instilled? It, it was instilled from my dad and my mom. You know, they always, um, no matter what, what it was, I had to work hard for it. Um, nothing was given easy to me growing up. Nothing was given easy to us. Um, they had me in high school. So um, mm -hmm. with that journey for them having me in high school, you know, I always had to work a little harder. Um, to to do whatever I needed to do to make it make it happen, and um, like you know, I just kept that throughout my whole entire career, man. You know, um, nothing nothing's gonna come easy, and you gotta work hard for everything you do. So that's where the two days came in in college. You know, um, I felt like I was overlooked and caught, you know, underrated. Yeah. You know, so um, I felt like I had to do the extra to get noticed, and um, it ended up working out well for me. And. How much your parents and their work ethic inspired you. Right. Now you, you're DJ Surrender Senior. Yes, yes. Now you have a junior, DJ Surrender Junior, two years old. Yep. Uh, having him in your life, right? And mm -hmm. now you're paying it forward to him. Uh, how has that changed your perspective or what kind of impact has having him uh, been for you? Man, it's tremendous, man. You know, going, you know, you know, when you go home and see his smile, mm -hmm. you know, FaceTime him or, you know, you hear him say, Dad, I, you know, you want you want to do great for him. You want to, you know, be the best dad you can be. And um, I had a great father figure in, in my dad, you know, that um, stuck with it with my mom, you know, for the, you know, going on what, I'm 28, going on 26, 27 years now. So um, from from high school, you know, when they, when they dated. So, um, you know, just having my parents, you know, and my dad really showed me the role of a, a great father. You know, I, you know, it makes me want to be a better father than him to, to young DJ. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all a blessing, man. The kids are a blessing, man. Seeing those smiles you put on their faces and providing for them, man, it's, it's definitely a blessing all together for sure. And it's, it's not just within your immediate family like mm -hmm. that you're doing this. You, you, you go back to uh, Greenwood, right. South Carolina quite a bit. Uh, do an annual camp, and from what I understand, mm -hmm. June fifteenth yeah, is now <laughs> DJ Swearinger Day. Yeah, it is, man. It you is. have keys to the city. I do have keys to the city, <laughs> man. The mayor uh, surprised me last June fifteenth, man. He came out there with the key to the city and made an announcement on my camp day, mm -hmm. and um, said he would he would name that day um, um, DJ Swearinger Day. You know, for the past um, seven years, I've done camps every year. 
Um, free camps every year. My whole old high school, you know, invite kids from all over um, to South Carolina. You know, we usually have a great outing every year. Uh, we feed the kids, you know, play music for the kids, and, you know, just give them the small fundamentals and techniques to play the game so one day they can be successful if they do want to play football and if they don't want to play football, just giving them an outlet to see that, you know, you can be successful coming from Greenwood, coming from South Carolina, and doing some of the things that, that I've done in the past, you know, um, to help you get to where you want to go in life, man, and that's what it's all about. You know, the kids are the future, so you always want to give back to the kids and um, give them a positive positive light to, to, to try to move forward. And it, that's, that's the focus of your Two Spoons Foundation, right? right? right. It's kind of just making sure that underserved kids understand right. that there's ways that you can you know teach them how to fish right, right? right. Uh, and, and why focus on that there's a bunch of charities that you could right. get involved right. with it was it was the main focus because um you know where i'm from is you know we don't have a lot of pro teams you know we don't have a pro team at all actually yeah. so south carolina and clemson is only the only thing that they can really look up to mm -hmm. and um in greenwood you don't really um, you know, we got to get hands on, you know, that's why I come back a lot and try to be hands on to show those kids that, okay, well, DJ made it, he's from Greenwood as well. So um, that's something I always try to do with the Two Spoons Foundation with the less fortunate kids, um, the kids that don't have, have, have as much, you know, I try to give back as many times as I can mm -hmm. and, um, you know, do whatever I can in the community to uh, help out, whether it's parents, whether it's Thanksgiving, giving back on Thanksgiving, whether it's Christmas, giving on Christmas, um, whatever it may be, man, any holiday, you know, the Two Spoons Foundation, it will definitely be giving back of some sort. And the name Two Spoons, right? Yeah. I I've, I've seen you come out through the tunnel, whether you're in Washington, mm -hmm. always eat, right? Right, right, right. Is that, is that kind of what it means? Well, yeah, like, what's man. What's the meaning I, behind that? It's always eating, man. And, high, and um. You know, coming out of high school, you know, the thing would be, you know, everybody's eating. When they right. on the field, you eating. And um, my my favorite character always been like Tarzan and always kind of <laughs> been the jungle boy. They, they gave me the nickname Jungle Boy. So um, in, in college, man, um, it was just one game, I think Tennessee game, when I was like, man, I'm going to get so full today, I'm going to need two spoons to eat. <laughs> yeah. And um, I actually balled that game. And... Um, it just stuck with me. Guys mm -hmm. started calling me Two Spoons, and then I was like, man, I might as well just stick with the name <laughs> Two Spoons, it. and I just kept doing Two Spoons from there on out. And when I got to the league, I was like, man, I might as well keep Two Spoons mm -hmm. and eventually build on that, make it, make it a name, make it a foundation, and um, you know, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it some swag, man. And, um, and, and then now, just one last thing, and thanks for the time. For sure. Uh, to bring you back to where you are now, right? If, this team has a real shot to make a playoff push right, here. Right. They need you in order to get that done. Right. It, you haven't been to the postseason since the 2015 season. Man. Are you hungry <laughs> for this opportunity, am, for the, for a chance to go to the postseason to help this team get there? For sure, man. And um, that's that's sort of kind of been the, um, the my kind of knock, I mm -hmm. would say, uh, for the past year since 2015. Man, I've been so hungry on each team that I've been on that I've been, you know, kind of trying to change the culture in a sense of right. just trying to be hungry and get the guys to be hungry to win because at the end of the day, um, a lot of guys play this thing just for the money. I play this thing for the love of the game right. and to go to the playoffs and, um, you know, host the Lombardi Trophy one day, um, holding my kids in my arms one day. And that's that's the vision and um, that's the focus. And um, a lot of guys don't see it. You know, the other places mm -hmm. I've been on, they didn't see it that way. And um, I think a lot of the guys here definitely have that vision and, and want, wanting to go deep in the playoffs, make a run. And to be the underdog, man, that's, you know, it's something special here. And we have a special team, a special coach, and uh, we go try to do our best, man, to make that run. DJ, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck against the Jets and the rest of the year. Thank you for having me, man.